Alright everyone, so for today we're going to do some Amigurumi oranges. Here's a couple of them I finished already. This one's plain without a face, so just give you an idea of what it looks like whenever it doesn't have the face put onto it. And this one um, actually does have a face. I'll go ahead and show you with the instructions in the video on how to do it with the face onto it. So then you can make your choice if you want them or not. For this, we need a few supplies. I am using a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. You can, if you can't find a 3.5 millimeter, you can easily go with a 3.75 or a 3.25 millimeter. I'm using cotton yarn, so personally, if you're using cotton, I wouldn't go with the 3.25. It's a little bit more difficult in order to work with. We're going to need some yarn for it. I am using sugar and cream. I'm using hot orange. Um, this one, I've already made these two uh, oranges off of it, so I still have plenty of it left for the orange. I'm also using for the very top to make that little bit on the top of the orange. Uh, same thing, sugar and cream. It's a number four weight. They both are. This one's a sage green. If we're putting on your faces, you'll need a couple of safety eyes. We'll need a darning needle in order to weave in our ends. And then for like the mouth and nose or any other little characters, I just go ahead and use a Sharpie. You can use colored thread or floss in order to sew on a face for it, which then you'll need the floss and a needle in order to sew it on. But I just kind of cheat and I use just a Sharpie uh, in order to draw one on. We'll also need a pair of scissors in order to cut our yarn. Then we'll also need a simple marker. Well, it's not necessary, but I do find it helpful in order to keeping track of our place during our project. To begin this project, what we're gonna do is create a simple magic ring. So what we do is just hold our end of our yarn between our thumb and forefinger, wrap around so that our tail at working end is on top then we simply come in and pull up a loop. Now here is where I like to use the marker because it keeps track of exactly the stitch where I need to put my hook into. And then chain one. And then what we want to do is put six single crochets into the magic ring. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through. So that created one and we want six total. All right, that we got six. We want to pull our tail of our magic ring. Don't pull too tight right now. I find it tends to mess up your first chain one stitch. Then what we want to do is slip stitch into our first chain one stitch of the round in order to join. And there we have our round one. Now for round two, what we are going to do is single crochet into each stitch all the way around. But first we want to chain one. And then what's different here is we want to work in our front loops only just for this round. So we're going to go ahead and single crochet into each stitch around. So that's six single crochets. And we just want to slip stitch into our first chain one of the round in order to join. And then from here, we're just going to tie off on the sage green. And then we want to attach our 
hot orange. And here I like to make sure I pull the end for the magic ring. Our very first beginning, nice and tight, so it holds together good. And then we want to chain one. And then we want to put two single crochets into each stitch all the way around. So we're back to working in both loops. At All right, now that we've got our two single crochets into each stitch around, so 12 single crochets, we want to slip stitch into our first chain one of the round in order to join. And now for round four, what we're gonna do is chain one, and then into our first stitch, we're going to put two single crochets and then one single crochet into the next stitch. And we're just going to repeat that throughout the entire round. So we'll, this row will have a total of 18 stitches made. Two single crochets into the first stitch, one single crochet into the next stitch. And then we slip stitch into our first chain one of the round in order to join. So there we have round four. And then for round five, what we're going to do is we'll chain one. And then into our first stitch, we're going to put two single crochets. And then into our next two stitches, we're going to put one single crochet. And we're going to repeat that all the way around. This row will end up having a total of 24 stitches, single crochet stitches made. Two single crochets into the first stitch, one single crochet into the next two stitches. And then slip stitch into our first chain one of the round in order to join. Okay. And now for round six, we're going to chain one. And then into our first stitch, we're going to put two single crochets. And then one single crochet into the next three stitches. And then we're just going to repeat that all the way around. Uh, this row will end up having a total of 30 stitches, single crochet stitches, pardon me, two single crochets into the first stitch, one single crochet into the next three stitches. All right, and then we want to slip stitch into our first chain one of the round in order to join. And there we have round six. For round seven, what we're simply going to do is once again start off with a chain one, and then we're just going to single crochet into each stitch around, so 30 single crochet stitches this round. All right, and then we'll go ahead and slip stitch into the first chain one of the round in order to join. Let's see, here it is coming along. All right, 
And now for round eight, we're gonna once again start with the chain one. And then for this round, what we're going to do is two single crochets into the first stitch, and then one single crochet into the next four stitches. And then we're just gonna repeat that all the way around two single crochets into the first stitch, one single crochet into the next four stitches, and round eight will have a total of 36 single crochet stitches made. And then at the end, we're going to slip stitch into our first chain one of the round in order to join And then for row nine, we're going to once again chain one and then single crochet once into each stitch all the way around. So row nine will also have 36 single crochet stitches. and then slip stitch into our first chain one of the round in order to join. So that was round eight. Now for round nine is just a repeat of round eight. So chain one and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So you're going to be making 36 single crochet stitches again. and then slip stitch into your first chain one of the round in order to join. There we have round 10. And now for round 11, we're gonna once again start it with a chain one. And then for this round, what we're gonna do is put two single crochets into your first stitch and then one single crochet into the next five stitches. And then we're just gonna repeat that all the way around. One or two single crochets into your first stitch, one single crochet into the next five stitches. and then slip stitch into your first chain one of the round in order to join. Now here is where I like to go ahead and if you're going to use the eyes then this is where we would attach them. I go from the opposite side of the seam. All right and then our first two rows are a little hard to see. But then we want to count three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And in between rows eight and nine, we're gonna go ahead and insert our safety eyes. All right, so there's one into that row, and then we wanna put the other one four stitches away. Okay, so there we have our eyes. Now I do like to go a couple rows past that just because I found at times the backings for the safety eyes have gotten in the way for me making my stitches. So go ahead and push on the backings. That's if you're going to use this, you can also, if you want, draw safety eyes on too, or just some sort of eyes. Uh, they're not 100% necessary, but I think they're a little bit fun to work with, so entirely up to your decision. All right, and now, oops. 
we're going to, for this will be round 12, we're going to chain one, and then we're gonna simply single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So this row will end up having a total of 42 single crochet stitches made. And then go ahead and slip stitch into your first chain one of the round in order to join. And there you have, that is row 12. Now for row 13, we're simply just going to repeat row 12. So chain one and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So you'll end up having once again 20 or 42 single crochet stitches made. And then slip stitch into your first chain one of the round in order to join. And there we have round 14. All right, and now, oh, I'm sorry, I called that last round 14. That was round 13. Here is round 14. So what we're going to do is chain one. And then into our first stitch, we're going to single crochet decrease. So go into your stitch and pull up a loop. Then go into your next stitch and pull up a loop. So now you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three stitches. So that is your single crochet decrease. And then what we want to do is single crochet into the next five stitches. All right, and you just wanna repeat that all the way around. One single crochet decrease and then five single crochet or one single crochet into the next five stitches. And you're gonna go ahead and repeat that all the way around. All right, and then slip stitch into your first chain one of the round in order to join. So that was 36 stitches, single crochets made. Well, if you count the decrease as one of the single crochets, then yes, 36 stitches made. And now for round 15, we're going to chain one, and then we're gonna simply single crochet into each stitch all the way around, so 36 single crochets. and then slip stitch into your first chain one of the round in order to join. That was row 15. And now for row 16, what we're going to do is chain one, and then we're going to do a single crochet decrease, and then we're going to single crochet into the next four stitches And then we're just gonna repeat that all the way around. One single crochet decrease, and then single crochet into the next four stitches. And then slip stitch into our first chain one of the round in order to join. And that was row 16. Now row 17, what we're going to do is once again start the row with a chain one. And then we're going to single crochet, decrease. And then we're going to single crochet once into the next three stitches. And then we're just going to repeat that all the way around this row 
single crochet decrease and then single crochet into the next three stitches. And then slip stitch into your first chain one of the round in order to join. That was row 17. And now for round 18, what we're going to do is simply chain one. And then we're going to single crochet decrease. And then we're going to single crochet into the next two stitches. And then we're just going to repeat that going all the way around this round. Single crochet decrease and then single crochet into the next two stitches. All right, and then slip stitch into your first chain one of the round in order to join. And that was round 18. So for round 19, what we're going to do is once again start with a chain one. And then what we're going to do is single crochet decrease and then single crochet into the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that all the way around. One a single crochet decrease and then single crochet into the next stitch. and then slip stitch into our chain one of the round in order to join dad kitty sorry about that <laughs> all right and now at this point we have our small opening in the bottom we're going to go ahead and grab some of our polyfill and i like to do it little bits at a time so i can make sure i get the whole thing stuffed nice and evenly now you can stuff it as little or as much or not at all if you prefer. I know I have made some that were so tightly stitched I didn't need to stuff anything into them because they held their form on their own. But here we just go ahead and insert our polyfill. Now I'm going to add quite a bit of stuffing into mine because I have little ones and these are seem to be the new fun toy of chucking at each other. <laughs> so let's go ahead and stuff it until you are satisfied. Okay. And now for our last round, round 20, we're going to do 
is simply you start off and oops, sorry, chain one, and then we're going to single crochet decrease all the way around for this one. So if we did our first single crochet decrease and then just simply do another single crochet decrease. So we'll have a total of six single crochet decreases within this round. And then slip stitch into your first chain one of the round in order to join. And then we're going to go ahead and tie off. So I like to leave the tail a little bit long. It just makes it easier for tying in the ends. Uh, simply because it's easier to trim off too much than to not have enough. So let me just go ahead and thread our yarn into our darning needle. Now we want to secure our little opening. Now there's a little bit of a gap into there so what I like to do is simply come in and I tend to go right across the opening to try and stitch it shut a little bit more. Just to make sure it's good and secure. And then go ahead and finish weaving in. And then you can snip off your excess. And there we have our little orange. Now for adding on a little bit of face. So now you can sew this on or you can create his face to look however you'd like. And as a reminder, the very top here, tend to give it a little push down to give it that little effect of like our oranges, have that little bit of an indent up there. And then go ahead and give him a little face. That's if you're going to. I'm just using a Sharpie to create his little face. And then I'll give him a little bit of lashes. Make him seem like a little happy orange. And there we are. We have our little Amigurumi oranges. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if there's anything that you'd like for me to try and do for you into a video, be sure to add a little comment at the bottom and I'll see what I can come up with creating a pattern in order to show you how to create them. And if you did like this video, go ahead and give me a little thumbs up to let me know. And if you want to continue getting a free pattern at least once a week, um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and thank you all for all those who have subscribed. I've just hit uh, 300, so very exciting. I got that notice this morning. Yay! Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.